Welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Melissa Wanish. This is Ruby Snack Number 70, Scheduled Tasks, Scheduling with Whenever. In this episode, I'll give you an intro into the Whenever gem, then I'll show you how to use the Whenever syntax, and then set up Capistrano with Whenever. If you'd like to code along, you can clone the Ruby Thursday example app with this branch, which is from Ruby snack number 68, and that's the last time we jumped into the Ruby Thursday code. So you can git clone with that single branch, and then you cd into the folder and bundle, and then rails db create db migrate. The whenever gem is a Ruby gem that provides a clear syntax for writing and deploying cron jobs. If you watched Ruby snack number 69, I showed you how to write the cron syntax into the cron tab on your server. Whenever provides a simpler syntax, instead of the numbers and the stars and trying to remember what all they mean, you can instead write it in this clearer syntax. Here's a link to the gem and their documentation, which shows you various ways to write the jobs. Let's go ahead and set up whenever. We're going to add it to our gem file, then we're gonna bundle, and the gem comes with a task called whenever-eyes and then dot for the directory that you're in and that will create a schedule.rb file in your config folder. So we'll go into that and we'll write up a schedule for a job. So for example, we're going to send our newsletter every Thursday at 4 p.m. Next, let's set up with Capistrano. We're gonna add this line require whenever Capistrano to our cat file. Then whenever we deploy, it will update the cron tab for whatever we have in our schedule.rb. Jumping into our text editor, let's go to our gem file and we're going to add the whenever gem and save. Now let's bundle that up in order to install the gem. And now we're going to run our whenever eyes command. And you see that it adds a schedule.rb file. Let's go ahead and check that out. And it has some notes for you. We'll go ahead and paste in our command to send our newsletters every Thursday at 4 p.m. And then jumping to our cat file, let's add that line at the bottom there. So it will update our cron tab. Let's go ahead and see what we have. I added some earlier. Let's go ahead and save all of this to our repository so that we can deploy. So I'm going to commit add whenever to add cron jobs to the server. Okay, now that we have that commit, I'm going to move over to my production branch and then git merge Ruby snack 70 where I'm working on it. All right, now let's push to our production branch so that it's ready to go when we deploy. And here we go. Let's cap production deploy. And I've sped this up a little bit for time. And it's running through a bunch of things that we added yarn during our lovely series on JavaScript and Rails. And we put in some React things, so it's building that. All right, and now it's restarting the server. If we scroll on up, then you can see that whenever ran a command to update the cron tab. I SSH'd into my server, and I'm just going to check it out. And to do that, you can use crontab-l to list it out. And you see it's there. And you see it's 016, 16 is the hour, so it's 4 p.m. Now don't forget that when you are setting these times that your server is most likely in UTC. So be sure to account for that when you set the time. You may want to put a little note in the schedule.rb to remind you of what that time is where you are locally. Also, don't forget about daylight savings time if you are somewhere where that's observed and the task needs to happen at the same time even when the time changes. So when daylight saving time starts or ends, you'll need to update the time. In my various journeys with time and rails, I have yet to find a really good answer to dealing with daylight savings time other than manually changing it. If you have a solution, feel free to leave a comment. Now, if you want the code to reflect a desired time in a particular time zone, you can check out this PR request for whenever that discuss several solutions, several ways of writing it differently if you want to set a different time zone.
There's lots of opinions going on in that thread. It's very interesting to check out. That's it for this Ruby snack. Thanks so much for watching. If you are not already on my mailing list, head on over to rubythursday.com. We're going to be having some more live coding events, so be sure to sign up to find out when those are going to be. And if you're not already subscribed on YouTube, click that big red ruby to do so, and here's some other videos you can check out. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.